Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 94 of OPA Podcast. Just the two of us today, Wyatt, you and I. Just the two of us. But we, we would be... Make it we maybe. But just to, to start us off, let's, let's just see. What does our friend Jason have to say from overseas? Well, please, please. Here are Jason's thoughts on the 25-26 loss. He said, guys, this is just a really tough one to swallow. We hung in there. I think the turnovers from Max Brosmer, defense allowing crucial fourth down conversions, and Penn State's fake punt were some of the major reasons we lost. As for Wisconsin, well, let's save that for later. Wyatt, overall, 25-26 to Penn State. If I had told you Penn State was, you know, one for 11 on third down, the Gophers only punt three times, they score more points than Ohio State did against Penn State, they have a punt block, and they play generally pretty good football, would you have been happy? I'm, I mean, even having seen the game, having been at the game, thanks, Stoop. Many thanks to Soup. We Soup gave me his seats for this week, and uh, it was truly an experience. <laughs> I'm sure um, it was fun in there. No, yeah, the atmosphere was nuts right up until like the last minute of the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like reflecting back on it, even having you know been there and experienced all of it, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is probably the first loss of the season where it doesn't really feel all that useful to play any woulda, shoulda, coulda. Like, we're, we're, we obviously are going to talk about stuff, but... Yeah, for sure. To me, you know, I agree with Jason that this was a bit of a tough one to swallow, and I think it was a tough one to swallow just because it was right there for us, you know? It, this game was close. This game literally came down to the wire. And it came down to just a really, really good coaching job by James Franklin to put this game away, in my opinion. And Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, and a lot of credit goes to everything that was being done on that Penn State sideline. Because I they... think James Franklin knows that this game was going to be a big stumbling block for their, their playoff chances especially with Indiana losing this week, I think he knew that a good win here, like, obviously, I think they're in either way, you know, but I think that, like, it was like, hey, I mean, who do they play, you know, next week even? Rutgers. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the game where you can maybe get tripped up, and I think he knows this Minnesota team. He's, I don't think he's forgotten about 2019 like like us either and they play maryland next week the bottom oh, they is play maryland next week. I thought, yeah i thought it was record the bottom is completely falling out of meriden of maryland and i think this was the game that was like all right this minnesota team can 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 trip us up if we're not careful and he was very aware of that i thought he did a great job coaching this game i thought overall you know let's start on offense um I thought overall PJ did a good job coaching this game. I really only have one gripe, and that's at the beginning of the game when you're uh, fourth and short in the in the in the low red zone and you elect to kick a field goal to to go up ten seven. This is the first field goal. Yeah, the first field goal. To go up ten zero. Ten zero, sure, whatever it was. Um, Yeah. I was I went to a wedding on Saturday, so I watched the first half with some friends, and then we got ready and went to the wedding, and we were watching the second half during cocktail hour on our phones. Um, so I, you know, I did a rewatch too. Just I would have really liked, I think, for them to. It, it felt like once they crossed the like, what is this? Once they crossed like the thirty-five, the forty-five-ish yard line, to me it really felt like PJ got in the headset 
and played for the field goal to go up two scores early in the game, no matter what. Don't make a mistake. You know, I think I think that like old nature came back in, right? Of let's not make a mistake. Let's get these points. Let's go up ten zero, and you know. Or, and and I I I I agree with you. I think PJ made some very interesting decisions about when to be aggressive and when to be conservative during this game yeah. that I maybe don't entirely agree with. Sure. That being the one where he played it more conservative than I would have liked. And the big one where they were like trying to get a little cute even with it, where they threw the ball to Ariante or sure. Story. Let's let's take um, let's step back for a second. Let's get there, right? Yep. So we're starting with this 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 10o, right? We're up 10o. And yeah. here is why I am generally not a fan of this approach in general and especially against teams like this Penn State team. Um I I just think I would rather lose by 10 than lose by 1, if that makes sense. Right? I would rather I say, hey, we tried. We got in a low red zone. It was fourth down. And you know what? I think because they go first and 10, negative run. Second and 11, of course, second and 11, got to run the ball again. Which, whatever. So you go three straight runs once you cross, you know, the your own 45. And I just, yep. I, I just hated I hated it. Like, I just hated it. Like, because I could tell you're perfect. You you have said I am perfectly fine with this field goal, and I think Penn State's front four really took this game over, and I think they won this game. I think with their front four, and part of the reason is because the there is just I mean no consistency to the run game at all. We're talking, you know. <laughs> 1.4 line yards per carry, if that. Yeah. Stopped runs. So stuffed runs, right? Less than or equal to zero yards gained, 23% of the runs stuffed. Stopped runs, yards gained, less than or equal to two, what I would call non-productive runs as well. 49% of their runs, 17 of them, were less than or equal to two yards. And, I mean, the same was said, I think, for Penn State. But Penn State was much more explosive in the passing game. And I just think they got into these early situations, especially this one right away. I was like, oh, man. I remember we went back and forth immediately. We are like, well, I really hope that one doesn't come back to bite you. Yeah. And that was kind of my really only major gripe because then – Right, you kick the the field goal to go up ten zero, and what happens next? They go down the field, one, two, three, four, five, six plays touchdown. Right, which is what Penn State can do. Yeah, Penn, and, State, Penn State can do it to anyone in the country. That's what they're gonna do. They that's I mean they're a very 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 talented team, and what is that? five plays 75 yards two minutes like uh, we can get to the defense but I think part of the issue here was that I think the Gophers were able to play the game they wanted to play for the most part on offense I do think the offensive line did not play exceptionally well outside of Ariante but overall I didn't hate the game plan I didn't hate any of the play calls. I know we'll talk about some of them, but I didn't really have too much of an issue with the throwback. And I loved that they got an interception at the end of the second half and immediately went for the kill shot, like I've been begging for all season. So I think they played a pretty solid game on offense, and I really think their defense let them down, and we'll get there. But... I know you wanted to talk about some of the, some of the some of the calls down in the red zone here, which they were well, not good in the red zone 
on the day. Yeah, I just I don't love outside of well, honestly, even looking at the like flea flicker to Jameson Gears, I I, I don't, don't love the play call. See, I can't I go there. Go ahead, but I'm I can't go there with you. I just can't. I I and I think I get why you say you can't go there with me, and I absolutely am like with the train of thought that you're with. I just like I don't trust our offensive line enough for it. Yeah, I, I was nervous yeah. the entire play. I was, I and it paid off you great for him. That that's a play you call because you aren't confident in your offensive line, right? <clears throat> I'm more of the, like, you know, they get the, golly, it's just, I've spent all year, like, begging them to be more aggressive, right? So I'm not, I cannot fault yeah. them then for being aggressive, no. calling that kind and of I'm a play in that situation. Yeah, and I and I, I I fundamentally get where you're coming from there, and I'm, I, I think I'm with you on that part of it, and obviously play works out great. You you, you can't really do it much better than that, can you? No, I mean that's it's literally exactly how you draw it up. <laughs> and uh, but, yeah, it just, I think they tried to get cute with it like that in the running game as well. Yeah. And like I would part argue, of me wonders if it wasn't Go ahead. No no all you. I was gonna say I would argue that's because they're getting their ass whooped up front. And they 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 kinda are, yeah. They 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 I mean Penn State's defensive line, defense the front four are great. They are good at football. Abdul Carter is going to be a top 15 pick at worst. Honestly, the fact that we had as good of a day as we did is, as I look back at the stats, is just shocking. Yeah. I, I think I only saw one sack on the stat sheet. Um, I can't find that right away, but what I can tell you is that the Gophers were... 50% on third down, averaged about 7.2 yards per drop back, and their success rate was above 40%, which is not the best, but also not terrible. Penn State recorded one sack and nine tackles for loss. Yeah. Which um tells you where our blocking is better. <laughs> or that we're better at scheming to get the ball out of Brosmer's hand quick than we are at scheming for the run right now. Well, here, how's, how's this I, one for you? I, I, Gophers on early downs. EPA per play, negative 0.2. Oh, unsurprising. Right? Just behind the sticks. Behind the sticks all day. And their success rate for pass, 53% on early downs. 31% successful rush rate on the early downs. And... It's just very interesting to me, like, like let's talk about the throwback screen to Ariante, right? To me... Yeah, let's do it. One, I love that it's a second down call. I like that. I like yeah. that it's a second down call. You're not, you know, putting yourself in a really tough position on a fourth and goal or whatever, right? So I like that it's a second down call. I like that it is. And let's be clear. I defended it in the moment. I was like, you know, it's an interesting play call. And if he catches that ball, who's stopping Ariante Ursary? Yeah. I mean, eight yard foot race with your, your left tackle, who is, you know, a first round pick. I mean, he's, a, he's who a... is going to bulldoze people. Yeah. He's like one on one with a, with like a linebacker or a DB, like just, just carry that dude in the end zone. You're bigger than him, you know? Uh, I don't know. Like, 
and I would also argue to because I th- I think my one like gripe with that whole sequence is love. I like the second down call, right? I like I don't mind second down being willing to try and do something fun and uh, catch, maybe catch Penn State, you know, getting upfield to rush the passer like they were all day. They just happened to drop Abdul Carter into coverage right away. Just a really good call. Just a good call by them in the right moment. Well done. And that's why the play doesn't work because you're inside – alignment your protection gets blown up right away max has no time to kind of look at the throwback and then scan his second option he's just got to dirt it and you know i would argue ariante is probably one of your four best players on offense right i think that's reasonable to say yeah so i don't hate giving him the ball in that situation especially against a team like penn state where their defense is elite and you have not really been able to do anything in the red zone all day. So, you know, I, I, from a process point, I like it. What I don't like is first down and third down because I, 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 you, you got to get Darius Taylor or Daniel Jackson a look in these situations. And the one thing I will say about Greg Harbo because I think he has had a fantastic season. I think he has shown a lot of growth this season. I think he's come a long way as a play caller, and I really have liked, for the most part, what he's done this year. Yep. But I feel like in a lot of these situations, we get a little too deep into our head, and we end up thinking of, oh, they're going to expect us to go to Darius Taylor. They're going to expect us to go to Daniel Jackson. Let's go to Elijah Spencer. Let's go to... Uh, Lamecki Brockington and you know no disrespect to those guys they've they've done well they've executed when we've needed them to but in this situation against Penn State I would have really liked to see some concepts or some plays drawn up for Daniel Jackson Darius Taylor like one of those plays where they line up Darius Taylor as a receiver in the slot put him right next to Daniel Jackson and say hey we're gonna run basically like a slant rub here from the eight. One of these guys, you got to cover both of these guys now in the open field, right? But they just, to me, I feel like we we sometimes get away from getting the ball to our guys in these high-pressure situations because we try and play the 5D chess. And I just, let's not, can we not do that? Yeah. I I'm with you. And that's, again, not to disrespect particularly Elijah Spencer. Elijah Spencer has been excellent this season. Yeah. Um, no, he's been he's, he's been huge. He's, he's made clutch he's plays. Absolutely everything you want out of a wide receiver, too. And if you call a play for Daniel Jackson and your second read, Elijah Spencer, is open, which I think is where he is his best, is when he's the second option on the play. Yep. I, I like that a lot better. That's it. And and to be fair to Harbo, Daniel Jackson got a lot of looks. Oh, yeah. Daniel Jackson, it was the Daniel Jackson show early and often. And yeah. I mean. That's a good thing. Penn State started that's out good. the game basically playing man, and the Gophers have basically uh, put on film that – if you are going to play man, we are just going to throw the ball to Daniel Jackson until you stop playing man because you cannot cover him. Yep, and he is going to take the ball and he is going to run with the ball. And then Penn State said, actually, we're not really that scared of your offensive line. They're not playing that well. We think we can get pressure with four the rest of the way and drop seven. And I think that is when things... kind of. Correct. Got very difficult. Is they were able to basically destroy the line of scrimmage at will with four guys, which I mean, it was really impressive to watch. Wow. I mean, what a what a good unit they have there. And yeah. Penn State, your front four, those guys are good at football. Pretty good. They and are. 
genuinely good at football. If you guys had like a real offense, then we're really talking. But we can get to the we'll get to the other side of the ball. I was not impressed yeah. with Penn State on offense. I think Drew Aller is going to get a lot better, but I think he's I think he's not... played very well. But I'm not thrilled with our defense either. But I, I also don't have a ton of complaints. Yeah, let's also talk Thanks. about the fumble right so i didn't see yeah. the fumble live i had to go back and watch it um to me it looked like max's instincts told him make the pitch like that was the read which is correct in this in the way that it played out make the pitch and his brain said be careful with the football and that, I think that's kind of how it reads. And that exact disconnect well. just results in your hands moving off the football for just long enough for you to drop it. And that's what happened. Yeah, I think I think that reads as a, a fair read of the situation in real time live. Yeah, I feel um, like it was one of those, oh, I should pitch it. Ah, should I? Oh, should I dropped it, you know? Yeah, and it's... It's hard. Like it's Max's. It's Max's fault. But Max went 207 pass attempts without turning the ball over. It was the longest active streak in FBS. I'm not like gonna kill him. Exactly over what I was gonna say is like Max has been so careful with the football this season that it's just very good. And it's an issue I take with what Jason with Jason's complaint. Is, is is he immediately calls out these turnovers from Max and like sure these are big points a game that's why they I mean, both I mean, lead to field I mean Wyatt that's why they lost the game was these turnovers like that's it it boils down to me to these turnovers and whether or not like I understand that's not like I'm not gonna kill Max over because he's played so well but in a vacuum that's what happened yeah uh, the turnovers are you know a six you know, six points. Six points That's in a game you lost by... One point. Yeah. So, I'm with you. Like, like go go ahead. Finish your point on Max. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut yeah, you off. It's just I, just, like... I just, like... I'm sitting there, and this guy's... He's been so careful with the football all year. And, and I understand that he, he played a poor game. He, and he knows that. He knows that as as well as any one of us. Anybody who's both of the two of us on the podcast today, but our two co-hosts who are not here with us, we all know that Max knows he can play a better game than that. Yeah, and I and think he said his close game. Aside from two plays, he played pretty well. He he had his moments, but yeah, he played a, a solid football game outside of a pretty gnarly interception and uh, a bit of a boneheaded fumble. So the interception, what happens there, right? What happens is they get pressure immediately. And this is right around the time in the game where they have switched from man to zone. And Max just makes an ill-advised throw into a zone. Defenders there makes the play but it happens because they are able to get immediate pressure on him right when he's kept clean he's been good but you pressure any quarterback they're gonna have trouble and to me this game is much more about you are just getting whipped up front all game yep and i i I just think that was much you know much more of a factor because this game, I mean, all the analytics, all the stats on this game from game on paper, it was razor thin. It was, it was close, close, close. Basically the Gophers were better on the late downs than Penn state was the Gophers. were. I think Jason puts it really well. Just saying we hung with them every step of the way. Yeah. And, And up until literally up until the last completed pass. I mean, they, uh, they closed the game out. It's hard to say out. that there wasn't a chance. 
they they had to close the game out by running a fake punt. Which stunned everyone in the stadium. They needed a basically a six minute drive. Yep. To win the game. And that's like I mean it's it's uh I don't know, like It's annoying, but just guys, this stuff. This is a really good Penn State team, especially on defense. And if people's like, I don't think people should be feeling the same way as after the UNC loss or the Michigan loss, even the Iowa loss. Like, this is just a game where we got beat. And I, I no, and it's it's, I think, especially with it being so closely juxtaposed with Rutgers. Yeah, I think it's a really good point of comparison to be like, well, at Ru- after Rutgers, we were angry, and we were right to be angry, because that game just was. That was right there for you. You, you got You have to win you, that one. It's just not one you can. It's lose. a given, and you just pissed it away. Yeah. And this game, I, I was reading just the the recap of the game, and a recap of PJ's press conferences where he says, obviously there's tears in the locker room because you, you played so hard yeah. and this game was so close. Senior and I like, yeah. How can you not feel for a team that, Left you know, they made there. their mistakes, but God, they fought every step of the way. I, I mean, and, and it's why I don't have a lot of complaints. You can say a lot about this team this year. And I think the word for us, this season has been consistency. Yeah. And we keep gravitating to that one. They've lost the games that they're not consistent and they've won the games where they are consistent. But with that being said, this team has consistently fought every minute of the game. And I expect them to keep doing that. They got two more games to do it. Oh, yeah. And with that, let's move over to defense. Because I think we've spent enough time talking about, you know, a relatively solid offensive day. Uh, An inconsistent offensive line, but other than that, yeah. I think there was solid offensive play. And there's there's, uh, the two two nervous are there, but even those – I don't want to spend a ton of time complaining yeah. about them. I mean, it's in your 78% though, right? Like, that's the that's the item they lost was the turnover battle. And I think great transition to the defense here. I think the defense mainly, um, they did not create the chaos that they thrive off of. And I think that was a huge issue for them. And I think part of it was by design because I think Drew Aller, you know, I, I – I think this is like I mean he's a young quarterback. He's he's going to get a lot better, I think, and he and he's going to be good. Yeah. But I was not that afraid of him this game, and he really beat the Gophers no. with his legs for the most part when they couldn't maintain contain in the pocket. Well, I don't I don't even know about that quite as much i just i i wasn't impressed with him all around really yeah um it's late in the game what as i was i was watching it over and over again it's they they kept going back to this little underneath pattern to tyler warren the tight end yeah and they they they, they, they it was just Copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. I think they, get the ball to Warren underneath. I think they identified a major mismatch between him and our uh, our linebacking core, and I think that's something that we have talked about all year. Is we know Cody Lindbergh can cover when he's healthy, but yeah, the rest of that room has been kind of shaky. And I think they sure have. I think they identified that weakness and they knew it aligned with one of their strengths with their best players, and they just hammered us with it. And that's just good game they planning and good coaching. 
the, what, and and I, I want just to build on that. They said these linebackers can't cover him, and the defensive backs aren't going to be able to come up and tackle him. No. So it was which nobody has, a, a, right? Particularly late in the game, yeah. They just found ways to scheme him open, and scheme him open, and get him the ball, and it was just consistent. You know, eight, nine, ten yards of play, and then you had which is Drew, all you need. Which is this is where I was <clears throat> impressed with Drew. Like I, I don't think he had like a crazy day throwing the ball. Or anything like that. Like he was not out there lighting it up. But no, absolutely. I not. thought his situational football was really, really good. He did a really good job of moving the chains with his feet in key situations, or creating third and short, fourth, or taking like third and long and getting it to fourth and short. I he they did a really, really good job of that because they were. Dude, they were one for 11 on third down. They were 13%. That is the first percentile. They were in the bottom of the bottom for the week in third down conversion rate. And, And they were just, they were good on fourth down. And they were able to get into these fourth and manageable plays. And what did we say in the preview episode? They were also. If anyone hears like weird crashing going on in the background, that is just two cats being absolutely nuts. Just don't. Just ignore them. Because <laughs> I don't think my Discord's picking it up, but my OBS might be picking it up, and they are just going bananas right now. So your Discord is not picking it up. Okay. I do not hear them. I see. I see the. I see the lines moving on OBS, and I'm just like, I. I, I have no idea. But digress. I. I just think. He did a really good job of getting them into these fourth and manageable situations. And like we had said in the preview episode, they are the most efficient team when it comes to success rate on offense. And they knew fourth and short, they could convert. They knew it, and they didn't shy away from it at all. And I think they showed a lot of respect to the Gophers by being scared to punt the ball back to them in this close game. Yep. And kudos to James Franklin, knowing the kind of coach that he wanted and needed to be in this situation. And, you know, going out and making some aggressive play calls, perhaps because you're scared, or perhaps because you're being respectful of a team that has beat you in the past and who you know is good enough to, like, play spoiler again. At the very least, you are saying... <clears throat> We are a playoff team. I am dictating the outcome of this game. We are dictating this game because we are the better team. We are taking this game, and we are winning it right here. I think it was a very good read on them after the field goal with, like, 548 left in the fourth quarter to say, hey, I mean, because honestly, like, not the worst kick call from PJ because— No, I I genuinely didn't mind it. Six minutes left. You have all your timeouts. You're going to get the ball back. You're, you're thinking at least once, right? All we need is a stop. And and I felt at that point that the defense had sort of started to readjust to this underneath getting beat by Warren. That they were starting to be in a position where they could get the stop. Like I, when, when, that, ha- when that kick happened, I said, yeah, I could feasibly see us being the last ones to touch the football in this football game. Yep. And then, but then you get, they get this drive where they have, you have them in third and nine, Drew Aller, eight yards, they convert the fourth and one. I believe that's the fake punt. Uh, Just an unbelievable fake punt. And then you have third and short, stop, they convert the fourth and one. And then you have third and 10, and you give up a nine yard run. For them to go fourth and one, and they just say, "You know what? This is, we're done here." And you know what? Good, on, yeah. like we, we've said it a million times. Good on James Franklin. They didn't play to lose. They didn't play to not lose. They played to win, right? And the defense. I mean, you just yeah yeah you, you got. We said this in the preview too. When Penn State 
gets behind the sticks, get off the field. Get off the field in these situations. And when it mattered the most, they couldn't. And you know what's really poetic? The fake punt. I don't know if you caught this watching it live. Fourth and one. This is probably yep. the only fourth and one or fourth and under five, five and under, in PJ's entire tenure where they have not been in punt safe. They had a return set up. He was, yeah. Which, yeah, no, where we've been begging them to try and set up a return all year. They were looking for an explosive. Okay, we're getting the ball back. Let's try and get an explosive return and see what we can do. And then James Franklin just pulled the rug out from under him. Great. I mean, just a great job. And it's, it's brutal for it to happen. It, when PJ's setting up something that we've been begging for. Yeah, because it's just the one time they're not in punt safe. It's so, it's just poetic, right? Like, But let's let's pump the brakes just a little bit because I want to talk quite a bit about special teams. Okay, okay. So, still on defense. For the most part, like you said, I, there was a point there where you thought maybe they were starting to figure it out, but they were just leaky. You know what I mean? It was just leaky. Yeah. It was just like... These, I think that's a really good term for it, yeah. These third and whatevers would turn into either, you know, fourth downs and short that they would then go for because they were like, well, we're, we've are we been hyper-efficient all game. We don't think we can't get a yard here, you know? And I think Anthony Smith, who boy, what a game. I, I thought... I think he yes, that young man has been playing unbelievable, very, very well lately. And I know he's a Pennsylvania kid, so the the Anthony Smith revenge game, right? Just he was disruptive in in moments that felt big too. Yeah, timely. Like Anthony Smith stepped up when it felt like the team needed him to. Absolutely, and and. Congratulations, young man! You've you've made your name. You made it very clear that you belong here. And I mean, I think I think next year, if you can take another step forward, we're talking a day day one, maybe day two guy. If he can be productive, just on traits, like he's yeah, he's got him. And so we'll see. But I think he's been playing very, very well down the stretch here. I hope he's healthy. I heard he had a big old ice pack on that ankle after the game. I, I'm sh- I didn't hear anything about an injury. It might have just been soreness or stiffness or something to that to that effect. He went down, I think, um, for a little bit. W- no, but he played. It, so the, the two that I remember going down. Um, I remember Maverick Baranowski goes yeah. down. Um. On a on a play that I believe is a touchdown, if if my memory serves correctly, maybe. And God, who the hell else was it? Either way, you know, big old ice pack. Oh, it's Kerry Brown goes down at one point. Oh no, I miss that. Please no. I think he's fine. Okay. I think he was back in the later. Okay. Uh, as was they both. They both did bounce back. Yeah. So. But they both spent some time off field due to injuries. And I got more to say about injuries in that game. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I'm, I have some sure questions, but so let's also just really quick touch on the blown coverage that they gave up the touchdown on. Uh, yeah. I don't know what happened yep. back there, but it looked like Wally thought here, he had help. Here is my read on it. To me, it feels like what was supposed to happen was Robinson was supposed to. We're supposed to pass that off. Was was supposed to potentially pass that off. Yep, he's supposed um, to be waiting. Robinson up top. had this understanding that this is a zone coverage and that's going to Wally, and Wally seemed to be not playing that same zone. Wally wasn't there. Yeah. See, I have I have so the Robinson's other... giving up, and Wally's not there to take it over. See, I have the opposite. I think the opposite 
I think the opposite happened if you watch the replay. I think you're mixing up the numbers. Because Wally's the guy carrying him through the middle of the field, and then Wally stops like he's supposed to have help over the top. Did I mix up the numbers? Yeah, I think you just flipped them. Huh. Because Wally's carrying the guy up the field, and then he kind of falls off him to keep his zone, and I think he's expecting somebody else to be back there. And Ethan Robinson's already pressed down onto somebody else. Yeah, maybe I just got the numbers mixed up. My sister and I were walking around at that point. So I, we were actually on the like plaza area. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't get as clear of a view of the actual field. No, I remember I watching that one and just I, being I, like, ugh. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was yuck. And it's, you know, clearly someone misunderstood the assignment. Yep. I don't know who. I think it it very much reminded me of I think it was in the Illinois game they basically had the same exact thing happen. So, and I don't even want to talk about the PI. We're just going to not even we're going to move past it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's Sometimes the one thing I will say is that it's probably the worst PI I have ever seen in my football watching life. It's terrible. Sometimes officials like to insert themselves in games in ways that affect the outcome significantly. To me, it's just not and consistent. I, you know what I mean? It's like if if it's yeah, going to be that of... tight, you got to call it both ways like that. And they didn't. No. I think there was that that call was obviously wrong. And then there's there's one more play where we're on offense, and I cannot remember who, but someone, I th it, maybe it's Lamecki, is out of bounds and gets blasted. Yeah. And it was, like, close, but he was out of bounds. Yeah. So, like, whatever. where's the flag for that? I really don't want to talk We're, about the P.I. just because it's, like, we know it was bad. Just whatever. Just, what? Well, gross. It is what it is. But either way, I mean, I think, you know, this game came down to they couldn't turn the ball over on defense, right? They didn't create those. Yeah, that's havoc a significant plays. part of it. They 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 let Drew Aller get out of the pocket and and create like, and that's I mean that's really it. It's very slim on the margins this game, like we talked about. So there, I mean, we could sit here and talk about you know schematically maybe they weren't blitzing as much or running enough games up front, blah blah blah. But I mean, at the end of the day, it just kind of feels like. Um, It was close, and if one play goes a different way, another play goes a different way, you get a turnover here, turnover there, maybe it's different. But, you know, hard to be too mad at them. I would have liked a little more aggression. I would have liked uh, get after Drew Aller a little bit more. But what are you going to do? Can I make one more specific shout-out on defense? Mm -hmm. So our leading tackler was Cody Lindenberg. Yeah. As one might expect. Who's second? Ooh. Ooh, Koi Perich. Koi Perich. And he was just, he seemed to be involved in every play. Well, he he was trying like to be the, involved uh, in every play. The full allotment of snaps, right? Yeah, he played the full allotment of snaps. And there was a specific offensive play that was designed to, to go to him. Yeah. Fun. Which, unfortunately dropped it would have been a very cool play fun though do fun it, do it more that we have for that um gonna be uh interesting to see if he switches his number in the future to what um because well because uh the guy waiting in the wings drake Lindsay, is uh wearing number three right now yeah i mean they would just put one of those like special teams jerseys on him right Can they do? Can they just throw a jersey 
over him? Yeah, they have like shells that th- they can just throw over you for like if you go out on a special. Remember, we got that penalty earlier in the year, and we should have gotten the one against North Carolina where we had two guys on the field the same number. Yeah, like, playing special teams. Yeah, they have like they have like basically like a pullover. It's like it like looks like a jersey and just has a number with like no name on the back of it. So it's just it, it just lets you change your number for a play. Yeah, effectively. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know they had that. No. Yeah. They would just. I think. Thanks for that. Thanks for that insider information. That's like a. It's a newer thing, and it like rarely, if ever, comes up. Cool. But yeah, they have like they have like covers for that. But yeah, Coy, Coy had thirteen tackles. Yeah. Four solo tackles. Yeah. I so mean, like. Let the very kid... cool to see Coy tackling yeah. and making an effort to tackle. Yeah, I, I mean, I think his tackling's improved. Throughout the year, I think he was kind of one of those guys who was guilty of the head down, throw my shoulder at you for a little bit. But you know, I think he's, I think he's like he has improved. He's a he's a true freshman, and I think he's really starting to find his stride here at the end of the season. And that's saying he's found his stride as a tackler when we've already seen him excel as a playmaker. And they're they're not throwing the ball at him as much. Uh, they don't. They're not testing him as much as they were. I think. I think teams have figured it out that Coy Parents is pretty good at football. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think. Um, I think if you had to pick between him and Aiden Gooseby or Kerry Brown to throw at, I think they use Kerry Brown and run support more. And I think Aiden as a Aiden just doesn't have the production on film right now that Coy has, and I just don't think. People are um, willing to risk the ball in his area, and that's a great thing. It is a very good safety room, and I'm very happy. Oh yeah, they're so it's so good. Like, it'll be very interesting to see how they manage that in the upcoming years because all three of those guys are coming back. Oh yeah, Aiden Gooseby's going to be a junior. Aiden Gooseby's younger than I thought he was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the other two are freshmen. I think if, I think looking back on this, I mean, we're not done with the season yet, but I think when we look back on this team, there's going to be a lot more NFL guys at the end of the day than we imagined. And I actually uh, conducted this exercise myself um, with the 2019 team when I was gearing up for, for last week. I went down yep. the 2019 roster and there are 15 players that were on that 2019 team that are currently on 53-man rosters in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, that... Yeah. And I think this team... And, you know, maybe you can say that this was a down season. But I think this team will be another one of those teams where we look back on it and we say, wow, there's a lot of guys on that team. I think, yeah, I think this is a season where you can say, I think there's reason to be disappointed in the record. But we get ahead of ourselves. Wyatt. But. I'm going to just, I'm just going to, I'm just going to let you off here. Special teams. What you got? Oh boy, it, it this is the first game of the season where I feel like special teams just did their job. They, they did their job and they impressed me. Um, and obviously, there's the you know blown fake punt. Yeah, I was going to say, aside from the fake punt that sealed the game. But, like, it, outside of that, what it, it, there's a blocked punt. There's a blocked extra point that's returned for two points. These are the kind of plays that we've been begging for yeah. for years on this podcast. Yeah. Where did they? they come from what do you mean like, like, where do these 
why have we not seen these? Do we get these splash plays on special teams? But it just it, it it feels like this special teams unit is a different special teams unit than we've seen in years. Yeah, I'm. I agree. I think the the Derek LeCaptain one one shout out Derek LeCaptain on senior night, huh? Yeah, very much shout out to Captain. He also had a kick return. That's just an effort play. Like that's just a pure effort play because they are in punt safe. <laughs> Funny enough, and of course he just gets through to the up man, and I don't know what. Penn State's punter is thinking because he rolls right to him. He rolls right to the side of the only guy rushing the punt and just kick, and just kicks probably it. Probably my favorite play of the season. Like Derek LeCaptain, uh, that play does not happen if he doesn't play with the effort there that he has played with his entire career here. And it's going to Derek LeCaptain is one of these guys. We can talk about this later, but this is like a small rant of mine. But, like, he is one of those guys who's going to get pushed out by the, like, roster shrinkage that's coming with yeah. p- plus NIL and stuff like that. Guys like Derek LeCaptain, who, you know, walk-ons have a, who have a big impact, earn a scholarship, stuff like that, that's going to go away. And, guy, and, and like, seeing him have this, this moment on special teams was just so cool. And so great, and I'm 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 upset that that's going to go away. But I'm I'm really happy for him. And I don't, I don't know what that Penn State punter was doing. I don't know what the Penn State punter was doing either. But like, yeah, the effort on the play. It's like I said, it's my favorite play of the season. It's there's nothing. That's, there's been a lot of plays that we can talk about and like look on fondly. That's to me, disgusting. There's nothing as near to my heart as that's that. very sicko of you. I love it. It's just like, you know, this this underdog player whose name we don't get to say, like ever, goes in and makes a huge I mean, wasn't impact. He like, wasn't he like the running back for a little bit last year when everybody was hurt? He was, yeah, he was like RB4. He was like RB7. He was like emergency running back. Yeah, him and Jordan Newbin. Like, like he's the the... He's the Zamboni guy throwing on the mask and getting in the net for, you know, whatever hockey team. But instead, he's a running back. But actually, he's like a linebacker. Yeah. I think. I mean, he's he's just a football player. He's Yeah, his position is football. Just a football player. His job is football. Only football. Yeah. Um, but other other than that, on special yeah. teams, you know, I agree with you. It was good to see them block a field goal, and um, it was good to see them attack that, and then also return it. I mean, that was. So, I mean, how often do we see that? How often do you see a a two point, uh, like extra point block? It it doesn't happen often at all, and like that's a huge swing in the Ethan game Ro- too. Ethan Robinson's gonna get a ton of credit for that one. I think we've got a you know, make make quick note of Jack Henderson blocking it. Also, what are they doing on field goal block there? They just like Is there a specific he's just, specific he's just, you're looking for? He's just untouched. Yeah. No, it was not there was never a doubt that it was going for two. Well the thing is is you probably just see him come off the snap and you're just like, oh there's nobody touched him. <laughs> like it's just it's crazy that the special teams unit came out and made these big impact plays. Oh, absolutely. It was great. Genuinely a nine point swing. But that's how from special teams plays. But that's how you stay in these games. And I, I believe you specifically mentioned last week that you wanted special teams to, you know, be a reason go that, out there that they and, are good be the reason that we win the football game. And oh, yeah. then they were. Like, special teams was the best unit of the day. I think we can say that. Um, No, 
I'm not I'm not going there. You you're not saying that they're the best phase of of, of team? No. Because Mark Crawford still had thirty two and thirty five yard net punts. Well in field flipping sorry. situations. But special teams minus Mark Crawford. That's not how that works. Um No no. Yeah, I just I, I think they I think I guess if you had to ask me, I like <laughs> this is the thing with this team. This is why they uh didn't do well like uh, consistency like there's no no unit was consistent for the whole game like if i had to pick and choose i would say on offense probably i don't know i guess like i can't really pick anybody on i mean they were good on offense but maybe you pick the tight ends. i mean your best guy on offense is probably daniel jackson a best unit, right? If you if you say like receivers or yeah. line or whatever, right? And then I think like your oh yeah, it's, your secondary it's on defense, right? Yeah, and then your receivers on offense, right? But it's like not every, not you can't pick all of one side of the ball, and that's I think part of the part of the issue. Yeah. Which you'd you'd love to pick everyone but punter on special teams. This game was like I, that's fair. That's fine. I doing mean, their even, job well. It's not how it works, but. You know, it's that like I, I get it. <laughs> no, I, I get where you're coming from. And um They really just need I don't under they have other punters on scholarship. It's like why is the defensive line rotation only seven guys and you have like thirty guys on scholarship? That's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Like Yeah. It's the same thing. It's just like nobody else gives you more. Like even if it's just like, hey, uh this guy can't really like do the rugby style kick yet because he's too young or whatever but he can sure boot the ball in the open field and you just run him out there in clear like we need to flip the field situations why not yeah like even continue to use mark crawford when you need that coffin corner because like in a relatively short field he can get you the ball inside of the 10 yeah it's something that mark crawford can do yeah. and did do if you need 38 yards in a bullet he's got you dude i'm looking at the roster right now and there's one other guy on the roster at punter his name is caleb mcgrath he's a freshman out of apple valley all right we're deep we are deep right now it is time it is time <laughs> we, need to, to put, we need to get out of it is time yeah. <laughs> To use an axe to climb our way out of this. Yes, please. The axe game. We're here. We made it, you guys. It's the end of the season. Black this Friday. The this is the one. National window. This is... Uh, I don't want to be too dramatic here, Wyatt, but I think uh, I think your season vibes are on the line here. Season vibes are on the line here. Absolutely, they are. I don't think that's being dramatic. In fact, I don't think you're going far enough. I think the the opportunity to improve your your uh, bowl game a little bit, to keep your biggest rival from getting to a bowl game while they are currently in a tailspin, and... Yeah, they're a disaster. And... You get to end the season on a win. On the win, with the on regular a win, season, getting with the axe. The axe. Yes. Oh my God! Like th the vibes, a, a win here. The vibes would be so good going into the off season. A loss, and the vibes this season is going to become like one of those what if seasons, and it's going to be really annoying. You have all four official trophy games this year, and we have lost three of them. Yep. And this is your last chance. And this is the big one. This is the one. This is the one. When you got hired, you said, if this I is, go one in 10 or one. whatever and beat Wisconsin, it's all good. So let's, how about do that? And it's doable. You know, I, I think it's absolutely doable. I know. I know. Yeah. I know people are like, well, you know, Wisconsin just hung with Oregon, you know? And I watched the end of that game. 
they I, their defense played really well. They could not do anything on offense in the fourth quarter. I Braden Locke. Well, they couldn't do anything on offense for most of the game. I know. I know that like me saying this is going to cause him to go for like three fifty and three touchdowns, but I am not scared of this quarterback at all. They yeah. just they fired their offensive I'm coordinator a week you. ago. Is it only a week ago? I thought it was longer than that. I don't know. Week, maybe two. It was after was the Oregon the game. Yeah. Which was last week, right? Or two weeks ago. It was after the Oregon game? Wasn't it? That was two that was a week and change ago. Crazy, it's huh? Such a, you know, it feels like it shouldn't have been then, and that's why my brain is trying to like put it anywhere else. But I think you're right. Because I saw that and I was like, gee, that's the game you fire the guy after? Yeah. I think this is a different, we have a different conversation about this game with Tyler Van Dyke healthy. But it's not Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, it's not. And they don't have Braylon Allen either. Yeah, they certainly don't have Braylon Allen. Uh, he's sitting uh, stashed on some of my Dynasty League teams instead. Nice. Man. I just... God. This game always is just, like, so, so crazy. Because it just like do, like everything goes out the window in this game every year, you know. Yeah, and it's just I mean Wisconsin's inefficient on offense. They're not the best on defense. We have kind of hit a bit of a skid here, and it's just like lining up for one of those really chaotic matchups between these teams. And I think the better quarterback wins this game, and I think Minnesota has that. Minnesota does have the better quarterback. Hey, Max, welcome back. We still love you, buddy. Always, always did. Ne- <laughs> never in doubt. Yeah, I mean, their offensive success rates are both right around 40%. Our rush rate is below 38% success rate right now. Pass success rate is 44 I mean, we're not, we're not world beaters over here either, but they are just... You don't need to beat the world. You just need to beat Wisconsin. Exactly. Like, offensive success rate overall, Minnesota is 83. What do you think Wisconsin yep. is? 82. 84. Oh. Defensive success rate, Minnesota is 53. Wisconsin 55. Nailed it. They're the same team. It's so funny. It's the Spider-Man meme, but it's Goldie and Bucky. I know. And just... I th- I just think, you know, on defense, we can really get after Brayden Locke, and I think this is going to be a big game for the defense. And it would be nice to uh see them like you know get up and then grind this one out on on the ground like they like to because that would just feel so good to do to wisconsin right just be up the whole game and run it down their throats how do you like them apples right i don't think that's the team we are this no but right that but how good would that feel but it is it would be so good but like it's just not gonna happen there's also something in showing them after all of these years of dealing with PJ Fleck doing the same thing over and over again. Here's a new dimension yeah. and we can beat you this way too. Yeah, I think Yeah, I think that'd be really really fun. But I, I, I I'm not precluding that from my scenario, my dream scenario, yeah. right? But Yeah. 
because you know i think what if it starts out with like you know two quick touchdowns from max they get one and running run from darius and then they just kind of sit on the game after that while wisconsin tries to catch up and you know it just slowly bleeds them out and i don't think that's gonna happen at all so i think this is gonna be another very anxious stressful watch for everybody like it always is I mean, yeah, I know it is, but also like outside of the non-conference slate, Wisconsin's only scored more than 25 one time or no, sorry, two times. Sure. And they were against pretty, pretty bad teams. Uh, they scored 42 on Rutgers, and they hung 52 on Purdue, which I think is still a one-win team. Yeah. <sighs> so, what do you? I'm what pretty are you sure. You... For? Give me some keys. Give you some keys to the game. I mean, we've been. T- we've been talking about consistency season if we're gonna beat Wisconsin we have gotta be consistent we have gotta be moving the football consistently and we've we've gotta be consistently beating them in the phases of the game that they are supposed to be good at yeah you have to make them play outside of their strengths cuz Wisconsin can't do it this year. Wisconsin is not going to beat you throwing the football. You'd hope not. I mean, if Wisconsin beats you throwing the football, everyone's going to be surprised. Yeah, that's that would be something would have gone will go have gone wrong. So, basically college football insiders has this game at a 52 52- Point seven percent win probability for the Gophers and forty seven point two percent for Wisconsin. It's interesting because ESPN's matchup predictor, which is worse, let's be clear, it's worse, has Wisconsin fifty point four percent. Yeah, I think the, the national always gives them that 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 bump, and I and I think they probably uh, bump there. I think they also get some help by being uh, more of a helmet school. Yep. Right now the line is Wisconsin minus two. Over under. That's what I'm seeing as well. 42 and a half. The line on CFB insiders is less than a point, actually. It's minus 0.5. It's minus point nine one on College Football Insiders. In favor of Wisconsin or us? Us. Oh, interesting. We're favored by less than a point. But the Vegas line has Wisconsin by two. Yeah, the Vegas line has Wisconsin by two, which doesn't surprise me. Yeah, 44.75 total. So, with that... It's going to be ugly. Yeah. But... Yeah, man. I mean, this game is going to, like, I think just really be annoying. Because I think PJ is going to show a lot of his old tendencies to start. And then, you know, then they'll try and, like... He's going to try and, like, calm things down on the road and, like, establish the run up front show Wisconsin that, you know, we're here to be physical and whatever, right? And then yeah. they'll need to get back to throwing the ball to be efficient because that's who they are this year. So um, I think it'll be okay in the long run, and I don't really – it's hard to have much else to say about this game. It feels like the same game every year. 
just yeah, a game where we're just nervous. Just constantly nervous about it. Well, at least in the PJ tenure, at least this game, you know, in the last, I guess, six or so meetings has felt like either team could really realistically win. Yeah, which is good. It's a it's a positive change because before that, you know, I didn't be I don't know that I ever, you know, you don't usually you go into these games hoping to win, you know, like you go into these games hoping to win like it'd be fun. But I think. You know, PJ's won a couple here. I think now, with you know the quality of where this program is at, this game specifically with Wisconsin, there's all. There, I think people yeah. are more like, no, we 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 can we should be winning these games. You know, for sure. I'm with you. So, with that, I think we can get over to picking this game now. You, we my sure friend. Can. Have a loss here. Care to explain yourself? I, I listen. I picked this game while Tyler Van Dyke was the quarterback, and I I hate it because these two tisk, teams. Tisk, tisk. These are like like we just said. These two teams are the Spider Man meme. To Goldie's pointing at Bucky, and they're the same. All right. Well, I'll break in here really quick just to shout out uh, Jason. And we got an update from our guy Griffin, actually. Jason says, as for Wisconsin, I'm pissed and I want the fucking axe back. Forgive me. So Gophers win 25-17. Give me the dub when I return from Japan and Korea, please. And then That, that feels like Jason's signature optimism. Sure does. And then Griffin chimed in, I think. Not much to say this week, but overall, love how the Gophers are one of these tough teams that can expose almost anyone on any given week. We never get the attention we deserve when we deserve it, but a game like Penn State exposes a top team, it makes you feel better. First to really expose USC and maybe Illinois as overrated as well. Would have been nice to pull this one out, but can't complain too much about a hard-fought game that came down to our own mistakes. Penn State deserves respect. <laughs> what does that say at the end? But but four was too high. Yeah. 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 I, I, I uh, Quick tangent back into that just to make sure we get Griffin here. But... For sure. You know, if we kill another yeah. 10 minutes of the poor people's time, we could wait. We could get the college football rankings, but I don't know if we want to do that. I'm I'm not opposed, honestly. Um, There's no no one can stop us. I, That's the problem. I I know I'm going to be angry, but I don't know why yet. I'm pretty sure I have an idea based on the AP poll, but Anyway, we should do predictions at some point. Yeah. Um, we'll do prediction. We'll finish this prediction. So I got Jason, 25-17. Wyatt. Explain. I have a preseason loss. I have this preseason loss based on circumstances that were different. Sounds like someone always doubted. Someone has regrets. Unlike um, me. Yeah. And, you know, th by this point in the season, I'm surprised it took this long for me to have regrets about my picks. Um, well, Griffin is Usually clinched, this happens. So. Uh, usually this regret portion happens by, like, game five. Um, but... You know, uh, preseason predictions be damned. Um, I'll let I'm you. I'll let you flip podcast. it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not like Jason. I'll let you flip it. Listen, I'll I'll keep my L on the sheet, but on the podcast, I'm gonna take the dub. Nice. I, I, it's gonna be close. We're gonna be nervous the whole time, but let's go with 
23-21. Gross. It's gross, and that's exactly why I like it. Me. All right, Griffin didn't make a prediction. He's got a, a loss here, so we're going to put uh, the Gophers lose 6 to 9. Nice. And me, I, of course, never doubted, always believed. I'm, but, but I just, I don't know. I, I feel like, give me Gophers 27, uh, 17. I wanted you to say something gross like 22. No, 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 no. 27 is already kind of weird. So. Oh, I wanted you to say something like 22 for Wisconsin. So it's just really gross. I wanted to have to take a shower after score predictions. No, 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 no. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right. Well, I think we're going to take a quick break here. And by break, I mean we're going to tell Jason to edit this out, and I'm going to tell him what time it, this is at, and I'm going to do a quick clap so he can kind of find it easier. So, yeah, we're going to go for like seven minutes until the rankings come out, and then we can talk about the rankings, and Jason will just cut that seven minutes of us goofing. Have you Have you seen the – a people? No. I just, I know I'm going to be mad. Oh, wait, I can pause recording? I'm nervous, though. I don't want to break it. That it's going to just, like, completely fuck up? Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I think my mic picked this up. Did Discord pick up that smash? Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, my God. I didn't hear you. Oh, Which I, I, I really thought I was going to hear you clap. Your mic went crazy for a second. That doesn't surprise me. Um, my internet's kind of being wonky. Oh, wait. Yeah, Has been is... for probably about a week. Okay, I have a timestamp that I can tell Jason. So, I don't, I don't need to stop recording, but... I'm unhappy about the eight people. What is it? Read it to me. Why well, type? Number one, Oregon. Number two, Ohio State. Number three, Texas. Number four, Penn State. Number five, up one spot, Notre Dame. Somehow, some way. Number six, up two spots, oh. Georgia. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I have to play some defense, keep going, but I'm. I can't talk. Uh, number seven, up three spots, Tennessee. Number eight, up three spots, Miami. Sure. Number nine, up four spots, SMU. The cat had mount had mounted the tower, and she is so good at turning it off, so I had to get her off. Yeah, yeah that uh, defense, understand. I figured it was a cat thing as yeah. soon as you said that. <laughs> Because right before that, um, she smashed herself into the. We have like this big glass cupboard with a bunch of glassware in it that we got from the registry. Yep. And every now and again, she sure. sees her reflection and forgets that, um, that that's her. Yeah. And she like arched back, runs herself straight into it. <laughs> and she does it too frequently. I'm so deeply disappointed. Number 10 is Indiana. They're down five spots. I think that's fair. I think that's fine. Below SMU, though? Below 9-2 and two Tennessee? I think... Okay, yeah. I mean, the Tennessee one, I think, is tough. But I, I, I think, that, like, the top 10, I think, is, like, fine for them. Yeah. Like, I... I guess I would have preferred nine. I mean, where's... Where... I would have felt okay with that. 
Boise's 11. They're up a spot. Clemson's up five spots to 12. Who did Clemson beat this week? Oh, no, you're typing. Oh, you're just typing to Jason. That's fine. I'm going to look at who Clemson beat. Because I don't fucking believe it. That makes me very angry. What? Clemson's up five spots for beating the Citadel. What are they at? Twelve. Twelve? Clemson's twelve. <sighs> Stupid. Alabama's thirteen. They'll lose in the ACC playoff, though, so it won't matter. Yeah, but it will because Alabama will get back in. Dude, Hazel just tried to, like, f jump up right onto the desk, and I just snatched her out of the air, and she was so confused. <laughs> Fucking nice. Sorry, she's it's she's I... she's on one right now, dude. Yeah, I believe it. She... Cats do kind of be like that. Her um, like tail puffs up, like she looks like a raccoon. Like when she gets super yeah. hype, her tail puffs up, and it's like so hilarious. I'm on the rankings uh, Twitter, so. It's now 7 o'clock. Where are my rankings? If they do them one by one, I'm going to kill them. Committee, please. Should I just turn the ESPN stream on? What am I doing? they do a stream committee please All I want is college football playoff rankings. Do they stream it somewhere? It will not give them to me. How do I not know this? What? Isn't it, I thought it was on ESPN. Is it on something stupid like ESPN U? No, it's it's got to be on ESPN. This is crazy. Memphis versus Michigan State. Why is that on? Is it basketball? This the, says it's on ESPN. I've, I've so. got the stream up in the second screen. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Bathroom break. It hasn't started yet.
glad that I'm back. Um, I want is CFP rankings. Please give them to me. Hello. Hello. I'm back. Nothing is happening. I did not know you left. Really? Yeah, my so my Wi-Fi was cutting out, and then I disconnected for a second. Oh wow, good timing by me. And so That's I've good. been like for about a minute talking to myself. Dude, hell yeah! <laughs> Just begging the community to give me what I'm asking for. And that's going good. No, it's not. They're not giving it to me. Hey, why are you attacking me right now, Hazel? What did I do to you? Besides clothe you, feed you, provide for you. This is how you treat me? It says this is live. Okay, here we go. Stream's on. God, they milk this. Just give me what I want. <laughs> right now I'm being attacked by a cat as well, which is just insane. What, oh, Hazel, can you please just give us like 15 minutes? She refuses. Well, I, I asked, and that's all I can do. The cat wants what she wants. And it's flesh. And what the cat wants is flesh. Reese, come on. Are we going to reveal the rankings or not? They just have a bracket up. Oh, my God. The stream just went down. I'm not even kidding right now. That does seem appropriate for the situation. It's like the rankings reaction show. Oh, they haven't tweeted in an hour. The CFP? They're going to just drop the rankings and fucking bail. I love the idea of CFP rankings losers having to wait for a college hoops game to end for their reality show to start.
They're waiting for this Maui Invitational game to end. Uh, what? <laughs> They're waiting for basketball <laughs> to tell me basketball? about. Memphis at Michigan State. Is that the one? Yeah. At least is Minnesota legend Troy Holloman on at least? I'll allow it if he's on the floor. Probably not. Oh, this is uh, like a nine-point game with like two minutes left. And they're waiting for this. So it's not even like that good of a basketball this game. This is going to take half an hour, dude. <laughs> it's two, there's three minutes left in the college basketball game. This is going to take forever. Three minutes left, and it's nine points, which means like... It's not it's... close enough to, to not be fun, but it's also seems like a tough. Yeah, it's like... It's one of those games that they're going to prolong because technically it's doable, but, like, is it really? <laughs> Should you? You know? Like, is this worth holding what? up the college football rankings for half an hour? It's not, but they're going to get away with it. Oh. oh, look, another foul. Great. Go figure. A college basketball game? Crazy. Dude, how many, how many seconds do you think have gone off the clock since we started watching, since I started watching this game and talking about it? Eight. <laughs> Eight seconds. No, it's like 24. Okay. Okay, so it's a, it is an amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> One shot clock. Good board. I think Trey Holloman is out wouldn't, there. That's cool. I know that dude. One of, the, one of the guys. Uh, Alabama blues. One of yeah. our pro aim guys is out there for Michigan State right now. That's fun. Good. We love that. Yeah. What were you saying? Wouldn't it be fun if Alabama loses this weekend, so that just put us all out of our misery? Right. The committee has to try extra hard to put them in the college football playoffs. Would you rather Alabama get in or Clemson, though? Clemson. But isn't that a horrible like proposition? It, it is. It's terrible. But, like, Clemson, like, if they win, I don't care. Dude, like, a minute has gone off the clock. This is insane. They're, I cannot believe they're just waiting to drop the CFP rankings until a college basketball game is over. It's a nine-point game. It's fucking bananas, dude. <laughs> Poor Jason. It's a, it's a nine-point game that nobody cares about, too. Not at all. The timestamps are going to be very far apart, Jason.
for for not taking those calls. God damn it! Is he flying back today, or I think he's flying from Korea back to Japan. Okay, so he's doing more time in Japan, basically. Actually, it's kind of a long process, isn't it? What? The flight from Japan to back to the States. It might take like... Oh, yeah. It's like 12 hours. Yeah. Ooh, Maybe. That just gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't love it. I've I've never done it, but I don't love the idea of that long of a flight. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen me, but my legs are kind of long. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not a fun time. Yeah. So I think it takes a while, and I think if so, if he starts now, he's probably home by thanks, home and rested by Thanksgiving, right? I would think so. This is nuts. Oh my god, 29 seconds have gone off the clock since I looked. Just no, no time. Hold on. I wonder if I can follow this basketball game on the ESPN app. You definitely can. God, the stream sucks. Well, first they will have to show me the game. There we go. Neither of these teams is ranked. Oh, it's a seven-point basketball game now. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, we, we have a, we have a review here. We, we got a review now. What do we do if Michigan State accidentally sends this basketball game to overtime? Oh my god, bro! I see. There's been a block. Maybe seeing if it's a goaltend. Is that what they're looking at? Doesn't look Maybe. like a goal town. Up next, CFP ranking show also available on the ESPN app. Fuck. Oh yeah, you're traveling tomorrow probably. Yeah, we're driving tomorrow morning. Oh, I gotta turn my auto office on. Shit. Fuck. That's nice. I also hate turning my out of office on. Golly. They are wild for this. How much time is on the clock in the game that you were watching? 45 seconds. Okay, so I'm not like that far behind. Jesus, God. Oh my god, it's going to be a fucking five-point basketball game. Jeez. Why are we making this worse? Don't don't foul. You don't have to foul. You just have to, you, you have to get a stop. Good. Okay. Good. Good. Oh, they're going to call that a foul. Okay. I want Memphis to just drain threes for a couple of minutes. Izzo is <laughs> screaming. It's a flop. Let's see. 
Yeah, it is. Totally is. Well, maybe That's Jeremy really Fierce Jr. shouldn't commit fouls if he's going to. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. 34 seconds. Also, the Gophers on CBS was kind of sick. Yeah. Like the the TV for the Gophers was was kind of sick. Good shit. Like like it the, there weren't a lot of people in the stands was kind of sucks, but um I think the Rutgers game took a lot out of of the fan base for the season of the momentum. What do you mean there weren't a lot of people in the stands? Like when the all the crowd shots of the stadium that they like to do for those games. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought it was pretty pretty bumping. No, it was good. It, it was good, but you know what I mean? It wasn't like it's the away side that's it's, always it's not. It's not. As good. Yeah. It's like the home side is always packed, but like the away side lines always like that's the hit or miss. Yeah, the away sideline was a little less packed. I'm glad you got to enjoy the seats, though. It was a... Yeah, that's a good view, too. I know. I really like those seats. So, when my dad started buying seats on the quarters like that when I was in the marching band. Mm. And he was like, yeah, I really like that angle and that view of the field. And now I, I, I get why. Like, I get it, you know? Yeah. And you're like 20, almost 30 rows up, which is good, I think. Yeah, because I've got uncles with season tickets on the 40 on the away sideline that are like, one of them's like nine rows up, and that's fine. And then one of them's two rows up. Yeah. Just can't see anything. It's just like you lose so much range of vision from there, I think. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's cool. You get to it's say, like I'm in the second It's like when they show, like, the Vegas stadium or the L.A. stadium, and there's all those suites on the ground level, and I'm like, what are you even doing? Like, That's just fully blocked. Yeah. You're just, like, watching the game in a suite on the sideline. Oh, my fucking God. Memphis called the timeout. I saw that. Bro, Michigan State's kind of getting hosed by the officials. That's tough. It's not Big Ten officiating, is it? No, I have no idea. Can't wait for them to jump into a different basketball game instead of the CFP rankings. Dude, this is crazy. There's there's 13 seconds left still. And now we go directly from Michigan State Memphis to Iowa, South Carolina upstate. Oh god. <laughs> Please no. God. There's some real, there's some potentially good basketball games on. Shut today. your mouth. Shut your mouth. Just, just, just not the, just not the one that we are watching instead of the CFP ranking. What are you saying? It's crazy. This game is over. It's eight point game with 13 seconds left. Just dribble it out. Fucking miss the three. I just. It's it's done. All right, cut, cut. Should we live react? I'll give Jason two options oh. to cut it. I'll give him the live I'm react. Pretty sure that the only reason that they're airing that game instead of just going right to the CFP rankings is because UConn is in that tournament. 
Um, UConn has lost lost twice in that tournament so far. Hmm. So it's like it doesn't even fucking matter. Like, why are we doing this? Who knows why they do what they do? Oh my god, the stream. This is painful. I suppose I should probably. Oh no, I don't want to do that. Do what? I don't want to put my phone on Wi-Fi and like attempt to stream it to my TV here, because then I will fuck up the Wi-Fi for for everything. Hmm. Need better Wi-Fi. Usually it's better than this, but for like the last week it's just been god awful. Tough. Jeez. How is Alabama going to get forced into this DFP? I mean, I, I think everybody's so worried about Alabama, but nobody's talking about Texas and Notre Dame. I think that's the real problem. Texas, I'm not as bothered by. Go, go look at their schedule, dude. I know they've kind of played some cupcakes. Oh, wow. They did not beat Vanderbilt by as much as they needed to. No. But they did steamroll a Florida team that nobody else seems to be able to figure the fuck out. Hmm. Oh, I'm glad they. And have they these, have these, these quality wins shots. against teams like Arkansas and Kentucky. Let's have these big shots of everybody at the meeting. Fun. Give me the ranking. I, Give me the ranking. I hope Texas loses to Texas A&M next week. Give me true chaos. Yeah, that'd be fun. Notre Dame has played anyone? Mm -hmm. Is Louisville still ranked? No. Okay, so the best team that Notre Dame has played is Army. Nice. And the second and, best and team they NIU played. NIU is like a mid-MAC team. It's Navy. And, and, and apparently the, the third best team Notre Dame has played is Northern Illinois. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I don't know what their deal is. They're 10-1 and one in their Notre Dame. Yeah, it's That's their deal. Annoying. It's it's name recognition. Boo. It's just fun to see all these two lost SEC teams squabble fucking around, squabble amongst each other, fight for table scraps. God, I forgot. Georgia yeah, they, almost they lost like Georgia. added Texas and Oklahoma, and they look at the Big Ten expanding, and they're like, "How dare you?" Oh, okay, Colorado at twenty-five. That does go too. Twenty-four, Kansas State. It's kind of out of nowhere, but whatever. Kansas State is the first team off of both the AP and the AFC head coaches. Hmm. Then Illinois and UNLV. Hey, ranked win for the Gophers. Order. Let's go. Illinois 23, UNLV 22. Then Mizzou. Okay. Oh, they really gave Mizzou a bump. Yeah. You know what that tells me? They cut at 20. Army. And I'm at 20 down five. The 
It's kind of wild. It's already like a, a lamer win for Texas. Because they're below BYU. Yeah. Who's also down five. I guess from that's the, how the AP has them too. Yeah. I'm, this is, I guess, from the last CFP poll. Yep. Iowa State up four. Oh, they're going to put Tulane above Iowa State. Tulane. Tulane's sick. Tulane at 17? Just in general. Yeah, Tulane pretty sick. I'll give you that. Arizona State, let's go. Kenny Dillingham, right? Arizona State's 16? Yeah. All right. So they're going to keep Ole Miss higher than they deserve to be, probably. Eh. South Carolina, 15. Oh this my is, god! This is shaping up to be. This, they are. This is shaping up to be silly. <laughs> it's too late, Griff. You got to ride with it, buddy. Ole Miss at fourteen. No. Yes. That's down five spots. But their wins aren't as as good looking as they used to be. They've got that Georgia win that's really carrying them. They're going to put Alabama in the top 12. They're going to do no, it. No, they're right here. I bet you they're right here. There they are, Alabama. 13. They want. They wanted to. You know they wanted to. They left them at thirteen. They're leaving the door so open. They're, they're leaving the door open. If they win the SEC or whatever, right? Like, sure, of course they're in. Yeah. At that point, they're in. Yeah, duh. But they don't need to be thirteen for that. For this. Clemson 12? SMU, right? No. Well, SMU's 9 in the AP. Oh, yeah. Well, then, that, good. I was like, I don't know, the Alabama thing's making... Yeah, Clemson 12. The Alabama thing's throwing me off. I didn't think they'd actually leave the door open like this. Just a crack. Well, one of those two ACC teams is going to get bumped. True. That's okay. Because Alabama's going to win this week. Sure. Against Auburn, right? Yeah, it's the Iron Bowl. And they're going to be like, well, Alabama beat Auburn by a lot, so we got to pump them up. I'm glad they're keeping Indiana in, though. For now. No. They, they, if, no. if that's who they bump, I'm going to lose my mind. No, they're already there. What? Stop. They're already at 12. They're like locked in though, right? They play Purdue this week. Oh, yeah. Or they're fine. Boise State. 11. Speaking of Boise State, you want another uh, Gene T stat? Yes, always. Where was it? Let me find it. Most rushing yards of the season, the FBS. Ashton Gene T, 2062. Number two, Ashton Gene T after contact, 1512. Three, Caleb Johnson, 1492. Huh. That's crazy, honestly. Indiana is 10. Which is that feels fair. Embarrassing. That feels fair. 
I I want him to be nine. I think you're no SMU's probably nine. Right, I think that's I, want... I think that's correct. It's it's just because I want Tennessee to be lower than they are. Yeah. I think that's my But problem. they need Tennessee because they need Georgia. Right, those are like some patty co They need Tennessee because they want they want Alabama. So they need Tennessee to be a quality loss. Tennessee eight. Oh. SMU nine, I assume. Mm-hmm. Tennessee eight. What are they doing with Miami? I wonder. They're probably like soon. Yeah, it's they're either going to be seven or six. Georgia seven. Okay, so Miami six. There's Miami. And then it should probably just follow the AP poll the rest of the way up. Although, would not surprise me if Notre Dame got bumped above Penn State. Hmm. I guess we'll see how much they respect us. Um... I don't know that the college football playoff committee knows who we are. Chill out. <laughs> Notre Dame five. Okay, so they they have left Notre Dame below Penn State. I think they'll just keep Penn State at four. The, uh, yeah, there's no way. They'd have to bump Texas, and they're not doing that. Yeah, there's Penn State. Then Texas. As expected. And then I think it's Ohio State and Oregon. Yep. It has to be. Cool. You can't put Oregon below Ohio State for nope, sure. There you go. So as expected at the top, some some minor surprises. Arizona State the... technically in. Arizona State is in? Technically. They're the um They're like the highest whatever power four conference runner up or whatever. Clemson's the first team out. How does that happen? How does uh, that work? Because of conf- conference champs. I don't know. Huh. They were explaining it earlier. I don't pretend to understand. I'm just looking at the bracket they're putting up. It's very interesting. Well, because wouldn't Arizona State be the... uh... Hold on, I need to check on something. The Big 12...
they do currently lead the Big 12. Sorry about that. Totally fine. Our sweet angel, Rosa, was alerting me that something was wrong with the dryer, so I had to go fix it. Because she's good, unlike some other cats. <laughs> so, yeah, because uh, Arizona State is their con they're the champion of their conference, so all conference champions are in automatically. Plus the highest group of five. Oh, and BYU was in until recently. Yes. Yep. yep. So Arizona State is in that way. So Clemson's actually out, and Alabama is the second team out. Correct. This is kind of fine. Cool. These are like kind of fine. I feel a lot more comfortable with Alabama not being the first team out. I'll say that. Yeah, and Notre Dame being seated as seventh, I th I think is interesting. Georgia eighth. Yeah. Because it's Oregon gets a is gets a buy. Uh, and uh, then Texas, the conference champions plus Boise State. Oregon, Texas, Miami, Boise State. Well, uh, yeah. Arizona State would have to play, but yeah, the top four get uh, by. Yeah, and Boise State gets it over Arizona State because they're higher ranked. Yes. And they deserve it. Yep. But yeah, this is just like the first time that like really matters to start talking about because it's the last week of the season here. And it's so confusing. Yeah. So, but honestly, you know, I think we can kind of end it with I. Th I they kind of got it right. Like this is these are fine? Question mark. The, these do mostly feel fine. So, yeah. I you know, I have some small gripes here and there, but it's it's pretty much fine. Yeah. Well, and I'm pretty sure my small gripes are just homerisms. Well, those are the best kind. Yeah, like Indiana should be nine. Sure. I mean, I'm in, but I'm not. But I'm fine with ten. I think. I'm I'm fine with ten too. I'm, I just think Tennessee should be lower. Yeah, sure. I could see them flipping Tennessee and Georgia around. You can see them putting Tennessee above Georgia. No, 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 no. Like um, using Tennessee to like put Georgia higher and pushing Tennessee down, like the loss. Oh, yeah, sure. I could do that. That was their opportunity to really do it. But I think they drop Ole Miss a proper amount, and that's I think good. Yeah, there. I mean, it's like close enough. Um. Well, I think we can... I don't love that we lose Army, but... No, but it was bound to happen at some point. We all know it. Yeah, as soon as they lost to Notre Dame, they, they were no longer real. Well... Which is a shame, because yeah. they played a great season. Totally. I think for Jason's sake, the listener's sake, we should end on... The nice little palate cleanser that maybe the rankings committee didn't do a terrible job. Yeah, I think that's fair, and I think that's that is a good way to end it. Hopefully, let's the talk about the rankings committee did fine. Hopefully, I'm driving back to Minnesota from Chicago with an axe on Sunday. Downs like a, a good idea, like a good plan. Say bye. Like something I would like. Uh, Ope.